Today I'm taking a look at yet another MPPT solar charge controller claimed MPPT solar charge controller and this one has come from AliExpress and uh, I think it's uh, well it's about 10 amp perhaps a little bit more from what I remember from the listing and it's a fairly small but um, aluminium case here and uh, the uh, solar and battery connections there on the top we've got a few leds here for battery low mpp interesting uh, charge greater than 80 percent or battery full so i guess that's a little battery level meter there and on the bottom there is a connection for a solar display this isn't to be able to program anything it literally is an lcd display that shows you battery voltage and that sort of thing and uh, i haven't got that didn't bother with that one uh, battery and solar connections at the bottom a temperature sensor um, now this uh, does voltage compensation so uh, i think the sensor value is around 25 degrees celsius so if the temperature is above 25 degrees celsius it brings down the level of charge for the battery and if the uh, temperature is below 25 degrees celsius it will bring the uh, battery charging voltage up a bit uh, at the end We've got a set of dip switches for the battery type and as you can see it says this can be set for gel, lead acid, AGM or LIFEPO4. Well here we have probably the most important table in the manual and I'll correct myself from earlier the default temperature at which it adjusts the charging uh, voltages is at 20 degrees so anything above 20 degrees that charging uh, limit will be slightly reduced and below 20 degrees it will be slightly increased but the uh, boost charging voltages and float charging voltages seem reasonable for the type of battery that we're connecting to um, interestingly i thought the life epo4 i presume it's using four cells in series that's my preferred method for 12 volts so 14.7 divided by four so it's charging them up to 3.675 volts every so often in a boost charge and then it's going to float them which some people don't like at 13.7 uh 3.425 volts per cell so uh well you make of that what you will um i think they're reasonable uh, now let's have a continued look at the stats here but before we do it's pointing out that if you are using this with life epo 4 batteries you need a uh, bms system attached to it this isn't going to be doing any balancing or anything like that down in here there is a charging process uh, graph and that all seems very sensible showing the uh, relationship between the voltage and the current between the three phases of charging so yeah that all seems fine on the right hand side here we can see well i've got the 165 watt peak version so this left hand column here and it seems to suggest that the recommended minimum watts uh, um, are 50 watts so you don't want to attach less than 50 watts to this solar charge controller up to 165 that's a 10 amp controller there is a bigger brother that's up to 350 watts and 21 amps apparently the maximum solar voltage is 50 volts so that's not particularly high for an mppt solar charge controller uh, but that's going to work with two of my 50 watt monocrystalline panels that have an open circuit voltage of about uh, 21 volts each so if i place them in series that's uh, 42 volts maximum so that will work quite nicely here i think they have a maximum power point of about 35 volts when uh, they're in good sun and uh, the MPPT algorithm is working as it should. Uh, nominal voltage 12 volt batteries only, charging current of up to 12 amps so that is suggesting that it's going to be doing some DC to DC conversion taking a higher voltage lower current input 
and uh, converting that into a lower voltage, higher current output. It claims just 4 milliamps of self-consumption. Con um, uh, I guess there's only a couple of LEDs on there, so that, that kind of makes sense. Um, it will charge up to 12 amps, but if your battery is below 8 volts, it will only do 6 amps. Seems quite sensible. Apparently it's got overload protection, uh, short circuit protection, over temperature and an integrated cooling fan with temperature control. Well, I'll tell you right now, there ain't no fan in that hole there. There's a hole for a fan, but there is no fan inside there. So that's not quite right. Now, the most interesting part about this MPPT solar charge controller was the fact that there is actually, you may have noticed earlier, connections for two batteries here the main battery and an auxiliary port vehicle starter battery. Now that means that this is geared to the uh, recreational vehicle uh, market, I would suggest, the RV or the camper van market, where it's likely you'll have a leisure battery to run all your things, your, your electrical items in your living space within your RV and you also have an engine battery, a starter battery and the idea is you can connect both to this solar charge controller and I believe it charges your leisure battery primarily and then once I guess there's excess solar or perhaps the uh, starter battery or engine battery is particularly low in voltage it will trickle charge the starter battery so i'm going to see how well that works now it looks to me like there's a break here in the aluminium case so i'm just going to take the two screws out here and the uh, two screws out on the top i guess it is so then hopefully the top will come off and we'll see what's inside now hopefully we're looking for an inductor, a large coil of wire around a ferrite core, which will indicate that this is doing DC to DC conversion. And then we should also be able to see a MOSFET and a diode. And if that's all there, then we're looking like this is going to be a positive result. Yep, there we go. And straight away, yep, yeah, so we've got a reasonable size inductor that's obviously going to take the full 10 amps potentially of uh, current that's coming in from the solar. We've got some T220 packages here. I suspect uh, they may be the MOSFETs, but they're just sort of flapping around in the breeze there, aren't they? And uh, I guess they should have been below the fan that hasn't been fitted. There's clearly a jumper there in the corner, which probably is where the fan connects. Some decent sized capacitors. And uh, what's that down there? This must be the fuse. Oh, it's in a lovely little fuse holder, look. So uh, that should be fairly easy to replace. See if I can get that out. Let's just get some pliers Arrgh. there we go yeah so that's easily replaced if needs be well that's quite good because quite often fuses get soldered straight to the motherboard and they are very difficult to uh, unsolder so yeah um, that's interesting isn't it I think possibly if I took the top off I might be able to um, slide that PCB out of there. I wonder if there is any... Yeah, let's get. Let's see if we can find the MOSFETs because if it's those T20 packages on top, well I'm a little bit worried that they might get a bit warm. But if it's possible, they are underneath the PCB and if they are then they might be attached to the sort of heat sink of the uh, and I'm afraid there are components on the bottom of this board can we see that but there are not 
any large MOSFETs attached to the case. So yeah, that's a bit of a worry. I think they're going to get quite hot. I mean, 10 amps, I guess it depends how fast they're switching, doesn't it? Hmm. Yeah, I'll reserve judgment on that for the moment. Now, I need to uh, attach it to a battery, but before I do, I need to work out where these dip switches need to be. Now, they're all down at the moment, which is none of these settings. Uh, but I'm going to go with gel, I think. We'll put number two up, and that's it. Just number two up, everything else down. That should now be in gel mode. So uh, let's connect a battery. Right, so I'm going to connect this solar charge controller to this small 7 amp hour lead acid battery in the background, which as you can see is pretty well charged, so I'm going to have to find a load for that somewhere, I think. Um, I've connected the positive to the main battery 1 connection, and uh, if I connect the negative, presumably we'll get a little crack because of those capacitors in there. Yes, we do. Um, and then I will screw that down. I have another little meter here which is going to be connected to the solar panel side of this as well. So uh, let's give that a go. Let's put the negative in there. Sorry, hands in the way there, isn't it? And then the positive. That then brings on the meter which is claiming, what does that say, 43.6 volts on the input of this solar charge controller. I'm not sure that's quite accurate, but we can see that we're definitely getting a higher voltage on the input, 41.4 volts, and we're charging that battery now in the background to 14.6 volts. The MPPT light, oh sorry, the MPP light is on and the greater than 80% is also on. So yeah, if I put my hand there we can see both voltage meters here. 41.5 volts apparently on the input, 14.6 volts on the output. I might just check that with my meter uh, because I think you can actually adjust the uh, value on there. Let's just try that. So let's just use this and check what the voltage is. 41.5 on this little aning meter. 41 volt, 40. So this is about half a volt. Oh no. Yeah, it's about half a volt high, isn't it? But that's okay. I can forgive that little meter half a volt. Um, so yeah, it's definitely doing DC to DC conversion. 41 volts on the input, 14 and a half volts on the output. So yeah, now I want to try and connect this to a second battery and see what that does. So now I have two 7 amp hour batteries in the background, both with a little meter on them. So the one on the left is connected and being actively charged at the moment by the solar charge controller, sitting at 14.5 volts, or thereabouts, uh, with 40 something volts on the input. The one on the right, though, is sat at 12.4 volts. That needs a bit of charge, and I'm just about to connect that up to the, uh, the second battery input. Now the uh, negatives are all common through a Wago connector uh, because they have to all be common and that was the easiest way for me to do that. So let's just plug in the other battery and that straight away, and my hand's gonna be in the way, isn't it? Is slowly coming up. Now I'm interested to find out if I just do a quick uh, select DC and zero it out. Uh, oh, we can't see that. That is charging at an amp. Almost exactly an amp. And that's actually what the manual says. Uh, that will charge the second battery at about one amp. And it's sitting, oops, it's sitting 
at about 13 and a half volts. So that's quite nice, isn't it? Being able to charge your engine starter battery uh, alongside your leisure battery if you're into the camper van and RV um, scene. Yeah, that seems to work quite nicely. So in the background there, I've added roughly 40 watts of a load with two incandescent lamps there. And that has brought the uh, solar panel voltage down to the mid 30s. That should be roughly where the maximum power point is. The maximum power point lamp is illuminated. The charge one is flickering away and you can see that the voltage of that battery with the load has dropped a little but is slowly creeping up as the sun produces enough sunlight on my panels to actually uh, compensate for that 40 watts of load. So yeah, I have my starter battery at 13.3, 13.4. My main battery is getting back up to 14 point something. My solar panels are at a reasonable voltage for their maximum power point. Um, yeah, so with 100 watts of solar and 40 watts of load, this seems to be coping quite nicely. So I'll just have a little go at trying to uh, see what the currents are here. The sun's probably not playing. So yeah, we're getting about an amp in at 37, 35, 36 volts. So that's about 36 watts, perhaps a little bit more as that creeps up. If we check the battery there, we can see, well, that's being charged at two and a half amps. So yeah, it's definitely doing DC to DC conversion. And remember, there's also, well, 345 milliamps going to the second battery now as well. So do you know what? I'm reasonably impressed with this. And although that those MOSFETs are just flapping around in the breeze, as it were, um, this isn't getting warm on the outside, at least. I wonder how warm they're getting on the inside. Right, I well, I've charged my battery back up and I've opened up the case. And these T220 packages, there is definitely some warmth in there. These ones in particular. I can hold my finger on there, but... Remember, I've only been running this at 2 or 3 amps, not um, the 10 amps, really, it's rated for. So, yeah, I'm not sure that those MOSFETs are going to last for a very long time if you do run this unit at 10 amps, where they're just, you know, flapping in the breeze. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.